It's around 6 p.m. on a Friday in Pompano Beach, Florida, and I'm here at Harris Casino ready to play a private 5, 10, 25 game. I haven't had the best last couple months of playing poker. I'm actually on the worst downswing I've ever had in my entire life, losing around $40,000 in the month of December and in January. I'm looking to try to get some of that back today. I sit down with $3,000. Let's get started. There's a button straddle to 25, a raise to 75 by the small blind. I re-raise pocket queens out of the big blind to $225. This game is always full of action. I end up getting three callers here for $225 with queens. And when you have pocket queens pre-flop, you're looking to see some good flops. However, this is not a good flop for pocket queens. Ace, king, high, two overcards to my pair. I check and the action checks all the way around. Turn cards a nine, small blind checks. I check for a second time. Middle position player checks, and now the button throws out a bet of $300. I don't want to fold just yet, given the fact that he did not bet the flop once checked to. I feel like he could be stabbing here with some weaker hands. Maybe he's got a nine or a draw. So I make a call for $300, and the river card doesn't change anything at all. I check over to him, and he says out loud, I feel like you might have a monster, and says... I got 10 high, I check, I show pocket queens, and they're good. A real river. Can I have my hand, man? <laughs> you had six, seven? Eight. Eight? You called the big book that too. On the river? Uh, I don't know. But you know what? They this early, probably not. The There's a lot of pre-flop action in this next hand. There's a raise to 75, a three bet to $250, a cold call for $250, and I have ace-king offsuit in the cutoff. With all this action in this crazy game, I elect a cold 4-bet here to $900 with around $3,500 in my stack to start the hand. Folds back over to the initial raiser who folds, and now the 3-better with around $3,400 left in his stack decides to go all in. All in. Alright. <laughs> Two times or you're one time? Good. You're good. Two times. Are you oh. fucking kidding me? Sorry. Dude. I call it off pretty quickly with Ace King, and just like that, we're playing over a seven thousand dollar pot, and my opponent tells me he's got Ace Queen. We're in a great spot here to win a huge, huge, massive one. The first board is clean for us. However, the second board comes out with a queen on it, giving my opponent a pair. However, the turn is a ten, giving me a straight. And I end up scooping this massive $7,000 pot with ace high on top and the nut straight on bottom. One of the big reasons for my huge downswing in the last two months is just losing a lot of big flips. Now, when you play very aggressive preflop against other aggressive players, you're going to be flipping a lot of the time for large amounts of money. And it seems that the last two months, I've just been losing every single time. My queens get cracked by ace king. Kings get cracked by jacks. My ace king loses to queens. So it is nice to get it all in ahead and end up winning two runouts there. We're up around $3,000 now on the day. Next up, I raise ace of spades, jack of diamonds to $75. Get three callers and go four ways to an ace high board, giving me top pair and a gut shot straight draw as well. This board is somewhat connected, pretty wet. I'm going to bet here I make it $200 and only get called by the button player. Turn cards a three. I bet again for $325, thinking I can get called by worse aces. Flush draws, pair plus straight draws as well. My opponent doesn't think for too long and calls 325. River cards an eight. I feel like it's kind of hard to get called by worse hands now if I bet for a third time on this board. So I slow down and check, and my opponent now on the button fires out a $1,000 bet. And we're in a pretty tough spot here with Ace Jack. There really isn't too many bluffs that he could have here. Maybe a busted flush draw would take this sizing on the river, but we are losing to a lot of two pairs. Ace 10, King 10, Ace 8, Ace 3. I decide to make a pretty tight laydown for this game, not thinking he's going to be betting a worse single pair for that sizing. I'm not sure if it's a good fold or a bad fold, but my opponent was nice enough to show me he had Ace 10. For two pair on the flop, he played it well and won the max. About 25 minutes later, I bump it to $75 with 9-7 of hearts. Only the button player makes the call. So we're going here, heads up, out of position to a king high board with two hearts on it, giving me a nine high flush draw. 
definitely want to be C bidding on this board. I make it $100 and I get pretty quickly raised to $300 by my opponent. Can't re-raise with this hand, can never fold. One option, that is to call and get lucky on the turn with another heart, making me a flush. I check and he instantly checks back. River card does not pair the board. I feel like a lot of the time he's going to have two pairs, maybe a straight. So I lead out for 425 and get pretty quickly called. I show the nine high flush and it is good up against a flopped straight. My opponent later told me pretty sick hand there. Nice turn for us. And we are cruising along in this session so far. Just a few minutes after that hand, I have ace three of diamonds now and raised to $75. This time I get two callers and flop two pair on ace two three with a flush draw. I bet 125 and I only get one caller. Now I'm out of position to a five on the turn. This does bring in a straight and a four now makes a straight. Also brings in a better two pair hand like ace five. But I do think I can continue to bet and get called by worse hands like other aces, flush draws as well. I make it $200 and my opponent thinks for a little bit of time and makes the call. River card's a 10, the flush draw does miss. Think my opponent's going to have some ace 7, ace 6, ace jack, ace queen type of hands. So I'm going to go with a bet fold strategy here. I make it $300. If she raises me, I can pretty easily fold my two pair. But I'm hoping that this sizing will get a crying call out of those weaker one pair ace hands. She thinks for a while I can tell she does not like this situation and eventually she folds ace jack offsuit face up. Nice fold by my opponent there. Um, good fold. Great sweat. Yeah. Good flop, huh? Uh, dude, you were going to show me? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can keep it. I was going to show you. You went too fast. I was gonna show you. In this game, you get a button whenever the game starts. You can use that button to see your opponent's cards one time after you fold. Now, there is some strategy in this because you don't want to use your button too early on in the session and want to use it later on. I was gonna show my opponent that I had two pair after she folded, but she acted too quickly and threw down the button. So there was kind of some table talk after that. Going pretty good so far. I now have around an $8,000 stack just two hours into this session. About an hour after that ace three of diamonds hand, there's a raise from late position to $75. I'm in the small blind now with ace jack offsuit. Now, all of you pre-flop wizards out there would say this is most likely a three bet or fold hand, given the fact that there's three blinds in this game, and I would agree with you. But when I'm playing these private games, I want to get in there. I want to give some action. I don't want to always play super aggressive pre-flop. I just want to get in, see some flops. So I decided to call here with Ace Jack. And the big blind comes along with a call as well. And we're going three ways to a 10 high board, giving me a straight draw. Action checks all the way around on the flop and the turn card is a four of hearts. I decide to lead out now with a semi bluff with my open ended straight draw for $200. The big blind player calls 200 and the initial raiser after checking the flop now calls 200 as well. I feel like both of these players are pretty capped, meaning they shouldn't have two pairs or straights after playing the hand like this. So when the river card's a king of spades, I'm gonna go for it here. I'm gonna try to put pressure on an 8x hand, a 9x hand, I've got a jack in my hand, I don't have any hearts in my hand, unblocking any missed flush draws they can have. So I go for a big bluff of $700, the big blind doesn't think for too long and folds, but the initial razor snap calls my $700 bluff. Ace high is not going to be good, especially up against pocket fours for a turned set with my opponent winning a pretty big pot. And just like that, I bluff off over $1,000 worth of my profit. After bluffing, losing bomb pots, not making or winning any hands, my $8,000 stack dwindles down to a $5,500 stack, losing away my profit. In this hand, there's a raise to $75, a three bet by the big blind to $300. Pocket jacks in the straddle for me. I could cold four bet, I could call. This time I decide to cold call here with jacks in position and the other player folds. So we're going heads up in position, three bet pot, to an ace high board with two low cards and an ace. I'm not gonna fold just yet to this $200 bet, so I make the call. And the turn card is a bad one. It's another over card to my pair. It's a king. 
My opponent leads out now for $500, and I fold. The very next hand, I get dealt in jacks again. This time, jack of clubs, jack of spades. There's a raise to 75. I re raise to $350. Back over to my opponent who calls. So, again, three bet pot with pocket jacks. Let's see if we can win this time. Flop comes down queen 10 10 with a flush draw. I was going to bet, but then out of turn, my opponent checks. I've seen this before, sometimes this could be a strong hand. So instead of betting, I check, and now he's forced to check, so we go to a turn card, which is a king. I check again, and now my opponent bets out $300. I've got an open-ended straight draw. I could fold here, but I decide to call. Let's see a river card. Let's see if we can make a straight, and we do. Nine of hearts. I do decide to check over to him after he checked out of turn on the flop. I feel like it's possible he could have a monster, maybe a full house, and he does bet 325. I'm not going to raise on this paired board, so I just put in the call, and he shows jack 10 for trip 10s and a straight on the river. We show jacks for a straight on the river, and we are going to chop this one up. Wow, you got fucking bailed out. I mean, so did you. <laughs> I did not. I have... <laughs> yeah, but I have jacks. You have jack 10. Free flop. Okay, so you got bailed first. You got bailed second. <laughs> I didn't get bailed at all. Free flop. Free flop. Free you were losing. Free flop. flop. Free flop. Yeah, that's what you're One of my favorite things about this game is just the friendly banter that goes on at the table. There's a lot of funny things that are being said, which always makes a very interesting, fun poker session. At 2 a.m., the table ends up breaking. I end up racking up my chips, cashing out for a small win. The next day, I head down to downtown Fort Lauderdale for a night out on the town. <laughs> A black card, black card. Yes, that's yeah. not me. Who is that? Right, I ain't riding in the fucking back. How's it going? You wanna get some? She knows her vibe ahead. Let's go to Dalton. The war. <laughs> Sorry. Cheers. guys that is it for this one hope you guys enjoyed this one i ended up winning around one thousand two hundred dollars at the harris last night went downtown fort lauderdale partied it up hope you guys enjoyed this one please like comment subscribe and until next time i'll see ya